Well, hello, welcome again to a reading of 1 Peter, and I got up to chapter 2, verse 11. Agapetoi parakalo hos paroikus kai par epidemus. Ap ekestai ton sarkikon epithumion haitines tratuon tai katates psukes. Beloved, I exhort or I beseech, understand you, um, as though it's almost as though you were, or it's just as paroikus kai peri uh, para epidemus. This is the sort of sojourners or strangers and sojourners that we had back in verse one, chapter one, one. Uh, Apekesta is from ap echo. Now you get the classical idiom ap echo to keep one uh, is distant from, and this is the middle here. So I be and it's after the parakello. So I beseech you, uh, like perhaps as though you were um, strangers and sojourners, to keep your distance from, to keep away from, and it takes genitive. Uh, fleshly desires, this is from epithumia, feminine noun, plural here, and then we've got the relative the, with the tines. So the very ones which uh, Stratuontai are campaigning, it's a military term from Stratuomai, catates psukes, against the soul. Ten anastrophen humon entois ethnesin Econtes Kalain Hina en ho catalalusin humon hos cacopoion ecton calon uh, ergon epoptuontes dox asosin tontheon en hemera episcopes. Now that word we've had several times this epistrophe, the conduct. So it's um, having. And with the calane is going with the epistrophane, but it's been kept to the end of the sentence here. So it's almost having, perhaps almost maintaining, uh, maintaining your conduct among the Gentiles as calane, as noble. So maintaining your conduct among the Gentiles as noble, hina, in order that. Enho is a dot expression that turns up several times in this epistle. It's almost when, it's almost in the time when uh, you could, could supply chrono or something here, or perhaps in the situation in which. Uh, when might be a useful way of translating this uh, in different contexts here. So it's something like perhaps in a situation in which, or perhaps when. Catalalio. Uh, is to speak uh, ill against, uh, so to slander. Uh, so, when, and it takes a genitive, so in the situation in which they slander you as kakapoi own, uh, now this, I take this here to be, uh, because this is plural, I take this to be here an adjective from kakapoi os, and this is a genitive. Uh, plural here. You do get kakapoi eo, which is a verb, and you might, it's got the same participial form as what we're getting here, but I think this must be here um, a noun, a genitive plural. So, it, so in the situation in which or whenever they uh, make, they slander you as, and in, this is genitive agreeing with humo, and as though you were doing wrong, then um, Epoptuontes, they looking on, they observing you as a result of your good works, they might glorify, from Doxasdo, this is the subjunctive here, God, in the day of visitation. This is an Old Testament expression. It occurs elsewhere in the New Testament. It means really the day of judgment, I think is the sense of it there. So, um, even though they slander you as doing wrong, when they take a close look at your 
as a result of your good works. So looking carefully, as a result of your good works, they might glorify God in the day of visitation. This is from Ep Optuo. It's got a slight religious overtone, an epoptes in classical Greek meant um, an onlooker, an observer, but generally an observer in a religious context. Again, the commentaries will have more to say on that. Hupertagete passe anthropine ketise diaton curion eti basile hos hup er econti. Uh, eighty he gemosin hosti au tu pempominois eis ec dicasin cacapoion epinon de agathopoion. So be subject, and I think this is a uh, this is a uh, aorist passive subjunctive. The verb is hupertasso, and I think this is a aorist passive subjunctive used in, as a sort of polite command. So be subject to all human. Katise, a funny word here. Katesis means, um, well, creation. Possibly here has the sense of institution, that which is created. So any human creation. Perhaps be subject to all human institution. Diaton curion, on account of the Lord. Whether Basile, whether to the king, hope uh, hos upe econti. Now, hope echo is to be supreme. Um, literally, to have, hold your hand over everything, so it's to be supreme. The Basile, it is literally king. This is from Basileus, third declension, uh, noun in eus. And probably here the emperor is meant the. Um, uh, Caesar, so the, the Emperor. Uh, so be subject to human, uh, to all, to each human institution on account of the Lord, whether, and then we get 80 80, so whether to the king, perhaps the Emperor, as supreme, as the one being supreme, participle agreeing with Basilei, or whether hegemosin, this is from hegemon, uh, hegemon just means leader but probably here again it's the word used at this time I think for governor uh, so whether to governors uh, as um, now in apposition to this dative plural we get a, part, a dative participle here as though they are being sent through him for Ek decasin is the punishment. Now this one is in fact another genitive plural from Kakapoios of those who are doing evil, but they are being sent still um, epinon for the praise of those who are doing good. Another genitive plural here from Agathopoios. So whether to um, whether to the king as supreme or whether to governors, uh, as though they were sent through him for the punishment of evil doers, but to give as a praise of those um, uh, who are doing good. Hoti hutos est in tothelema to theu agathopoiuntas bimun ten ton afronon anthropon ago agnosian. Um, I'll just pause it there, I think, um, because um, the literally the will of God is thus. So it's something like, um, this is the will of God, uh, or the will of God is thus, or for thus is the will of God. For the agathopoi untas, now this is from the participle, agathopoio. So he's used the noun up here, now we're having the corresponding verb as a participle. For um, the will, so thus it is the will of God, 
for those doing good, fimun, this is an infinitive from fimmo. It's a word meaning to muzzle, to make, to shut up. So it does occur in one of the Gospels, I think it's in Mark, uh, fimmo. So to muzzle, and then the tain goes with the agnosion, to muzzle the ignorance of foolish men. Again, note, enjoy all the assonance here. Aphronon, anthropon, agonision. Again, th this is not accidental. The Greek likes the use um, of, of assonance. is fairly common. It's used elsewhere in this writer as well. Hos eleutheroi. Now, this, we have to supply something here. It's sort of as free men. So you, we would probably say, live as free men, conduct yourself as free men. You could just say, as free men, but nice to put something in here. So live as free men, and not as, and that goes with the participle, not as those having, tain uh, eleutheron, the freedom as an epikaluma, a cover or pretext uh, of malice, of evil doing, fact of malice. So again, the word order is slightly interlaced here, and I think the hose we simply take uh, with the participle. So, live as free men, and not as those having freedom, as an epikaluma, a pretext of malice or of wickedness, but, understand again, live as servants or slaves of God. Pantas timacity, honour everyone. Love, uh, ten adelfoteta, this is third declension feminine, it's from adelfotes, another abstract noun. It means the, the, the brotherhood, even though it's a feminine noun, because it's an abstract idea in Greek. Abstract ideas are often in the feminine. So love the brotherhood. Ton uh, theon for base there. Fear God. Ton basileia timati. Honor the king. That is, as I mentioned before, probably a reference to the emperor. And that is the next little section of chapter 2.